Hello absolutely everyone, this is Dimitri and MG Owners Australia on a lovely sunny but a little bit windy day here in Sydney. So I would like to check in with you and talk to you a little bit about my latest discoveries and latest experience with my lovely Havel H6 that's parked right behind me right there. No, the, not the far far white one but the, the, closest, the closest lovely metallic grey one. So you might remember that I was saying in the previous video that I thought that they could have made the central panel and the specifically that um, unfoldable holder for the cups a little bit sturdier or at the very least permanent like just a, just a plastic mold as we would expect to have in most of the cars. Not that poppable thing, you know, the thing that is um, that appeared to be a bit, I even remember calling it flimsy and this is the main thing where I was wrong. I would like to correct that. So today, kind of driving carefully in one of the back streets and keeping my eyes on the road, I can assure you, um, I recorded essentially the how did the cups first, the coffee cups, and then just a normal 600 milliliter water bottle behaved in those holders during the drive. And the drive was during uh, like around the back street, so it was not at high speed, but it was a stop and go, stop and go, and it was around a couple of, couple of roundabouts, the car had to turn, so it was definitely a realistic scenario that it was tested against. As you can see, kind of in the background there, I apologize for shaking and I apologize if it gives you vertigo or something uh, similar. Um, it looks, it looks fine. It looks fine. It looks like that apparently flimsy holder that I thought is not going to do, uh, is not going to do a good job. Well, I should have given uh, Havel a little bit of a uh, kind of you know, um, I should have assumed that Havel has tested the product properly and, you know, I, I assumed so, but somehow I still felt that it is not going to do a good job. And it did. It was fine. The, the cups didn't even move and the bottle didn't even move and it was okay. Acceleration was decent. So I actually, I'm quite impressed and I'm quite, quite happy about it. So it was, it was fine. So that is in case you thought that something is flimsy there in the construction of this, of the dash and of the conveniences of life things such as cup holders, it's very important to us to day, for day-to-day -day use of the vehicles, I can assure you it is fine. Tested. Fine. Dimitri approved. The thing that disappointed me and surprised me, for the lack of a better word, was the fact that the rare, the rare seat passengers, so passengers at the back couple of seats there, they naturally want to put their water bottles and some of a few of their possessions, I don't know, headphones, um, a small bag, something like that. Typically that's being put into the into the pockets of the door, yeah, into the door, door pockets. Well, all of my previous cars, MG HS, MG ZST, our current one, um, LDV D90, my Jeep, <laughs> my previous Jeep that was, you know, apparently designed in 1940s and hasn't changed much since then. By memory, all of those cars had kind of wider pocket, wider back pockets, and you could easily, they even had a special slot, which we would imagine to be a round slot, to put the bottle into. Here, as you can see, there isn't such a thing. The pockets are plastic, they are not expandable, they are very, very narrow. They are really, really narrow. So un unless you have a really some uh, bottle size that's unknown to me and unknown to us in Australia, something that is really, really thin like that, that is supposed to fit in there, you kind of have to squeeze the bottle in. And not all plastic of the bottles is particularly squeezable. Some of them have more solid solid bottom areas to kind of to hold the structure of the bottle. Doesn't matter. But point point is that with this sam sample bottle, I was able to like plug it in and you can see that it's fine, but it's with this particular bottle. But overall, I think you can see that I'm not pretending that it is a, a really kind of weird and disappointing that Havel didn't think that someone would think of the most basic idea of putting a bottle into the side side pocket in the in the door. Yes, of course, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room. Of course, there is that little table that, that you can fold out in the in the central central area of the of the back seat. Of course you can. But in all honesty, how many of you are, are using it? 
I've never used it in any of my previous cars, not MG HS, not MG ZST, not this car, not LDV D90. Maybe a few times, really, really occasionally, very occasionally, especially when we tried to do like a little uh, urban camping style romantic drive out and watch a, watch a movie in, in a car. And in case you have never done it, you're welcome for an idea that I've just given to you. Try doing that. That's actually quite cool if you don't want to sit at home all the time and you can't, can't be bothered going to actually to the movies or whatever. Anyway, point is, not everyone uh, is using that tray table. Only if you are driving interstate, you have kids and kids are spending their hours sitting there, shuffling around. Yes, they can then use that central table and they can put their bottles into that central central area. But generally, typically, people pop in into the car for 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes drive, average drive from one place to another, at least in our use cases. And the first thing that comes to mind is that the bottle goes into the side pocket. And here, as you can see, you can squeeze one in, but that is subject to the bottle allowing it. But overall, this is surprisingly, very, very surprisingly, not that well thought through, I have to say. So that part, again, is it a, is it a life-changing kind of, uh, in a negative way, experience? Is it something that, oh, I'm so disappointed with Havel H6 now? No, not by a long shot. But it's still, it's still my continued flow of honest reviews. As I discover something, I talk to you about it. Not just the good things, but also some of these things that are... I, I reckon they could have been done better. I don't know why those pockets have to be... Uh, those uh, back pockets in the doors have to be so, so bloody weirdly thin. I do not understand. To finish it on a positive note, as far as my other quick findings over the past couple of weeks are concerned with the, with Havel H6. I already spoke very highly about the car, but I only had it for a few days. So I guess we will continue talking as now I've driven it a fair few more times. Yeah, I'm still quite impressed with how quiet the car is. It's very quiet at driving. Um, the insulation from the road noise is fantastic, especially following up on my video where I was talking about MG ZST. In fact, I think that the reason why I talked about MG ZST as being so noisy and it suddenly hits you, you like realize just how noisy it is in MG ZST, it's only because now I have something to compare it to. Now I have this car and it's really, really quiet, especially for the budget brand range if you're driving a lexus or something porsche cayenne please don't even bother talking to me i'm joking i always love talking to everyone but you understand why it would be an inaccurate comparison this is probably the first car in my recent cheap cars that i bought in the in 2022 that is offering you that premium drive experience it's definitely very quiet super impressed by that particular thing now talking about the drive itself i'm gonna say to you that i'm actually very impressed by the fact that this car has the steering wheel that's adjustable not just vertically not just on the tilt but also you can pull it out and make it a bit closer to yourself or a bit further away from yourself depending on how big you are so i will not even i will not even stop here and start comparing and say did other cars have it and whatever because i kind of it never even crossed my mind to be honest with you but when i was watching reviews on Havel h6 and I, I, to be honest, even when I sat in Havel H6, knowingly that it has that feature, mind you, but I was like, oh, absolutely, it, the steering wheel is quite a bit far away from me. I would like to actually have it a little closer. Was very impressed by the fact that it has that feature, and um, I adjusted the steering wheel nicely, and I'm really enjoying the, the quality of the drive. So these are just a couple of, uh, you know, let's put a little bit of butter on top so that it doesn't seem like a bit of a... Um, negatively focused rant on not being able to fit my water bottle here it is by the way here is a hero of our discussion it's still here it's still here after these tests have been performed it survived um, but overall still big fan a big fan of Havel H6 um, no car is absolutely perfect but to be honest with you still maintaining a position that for this price range in 2022 in Australia, do not know what kind of lineup of vehicles, especially budget affordable brands you have where you are. But here, like, I love it. I love it. I'm, go I'm not going to say it's unbeatable. In fact, I'm welcoming contestants. I'm welcoming Cherry to start showing to us what they bring to Australia with a Moto 5 that still has not been <clears throat> revealed at the moment of recording of this video. And I'm still waiting for my invitation, Cherry to come take a look at your glorious Amoda 5. Um, 
so I'm welcoming healthy competition because I think competition between the brands in every segment is what moves this industry forward. And at the end of the day, it's always good for us, for the consumer. It's always good for the consumer. That is the, that is the bottom line of all of this. Thanks for tuning in today, my friends, from this slightly different uh, recording position. Maybe sound was a little bit sucky. I apologize if it was. But do let me know in the comments down below if you like slightly changed perspective sometimes rather than me always talking to you from the car. And I will consider doing it more, you know, because when the weather is lovely, why not record it like this and give you a bit of a feel, especially as some of you are going through winter right now in Europe. I'm sorry. Um, sometimes I want to share a bit of sunshine with you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be speaking to you again about something else, Havel H6 or something else related soon. Bye for now.